page 64, all I'm in. At the top of the page, talk a little bit about syncopation. Syncopation has been around for hundreds of years, way back since music started, I think. To me, syncopation is either I play a note when I don't expect one, or I don't play a note when I do expect one. And it's not an accident. <laughs> Usually it's an accident. It's like in the first measure. The rhythm, both hands have the same rhythm, so I'll take the left hand, it's just got one note. You have one and two and, and you're playing on the and of two. You're expected to be on beat three. One and two and three and four and. And four and. Something like that. But I play it early. I play it on the and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and. Playing it a little early, that's syncopation. Uh, well, that's one example of syncopation. This, there's syncopations all over this place. We've had syncopations in other pieces we've already had, we just didn't talk about it. And it is part of the idea with syncopation, is, it gets into the interpretation, is most of the time when you have a syncopated note, when you play it a little early or a little late or whatever, you'll, you'll put a little more stress on that note. You'll, just a slight accent, you'll just bring out the note slightly. A lot of times in the music, they'll put an accent on it. Like here in this music, first measure, on that eighth note tied to a half note, that's accented. Well, that's because of the syncopation. But even if it didn't have an accent, you'd still put a slight accent on it just as, as interpreting it. So it's one and two and three. You bring out that syncopated note just a little bit. It's like saying, no, this isn't an accident. I meant to do this. Boom. Now, 4-4 four, four time with one flat at the beginning, so we're starting out in the key of F major. But when you look it over, and you see at the top of page 65, double bars, that means a new section, and you'll see that the one flat goes away, that natural sign there erases the flat. You have to do that or the flat would continue. And then they give you a sharp. So now we're in the key of G major. So we just went from F major to G major. And if we, it doesn't, but if it were to go back to F major again, then they'd have to put in a natural sign to take away the sharp and give you a flat sign to give you the flat back. And that's how they change. They can change key signatures any time, any number of times, whenever. It just needs to be at a bar line is all. Right hand first, let's get the notes and the fingering and the rhythm here. Starting with an F chord, an A, C, F, and then the next one is a B flat, I do that at two here because I'm I can hear to you can do this if you want that's okay I typically would go a one three because that to me that just feels natural you'll get that so that's the fingering I would typically use here but so it's a one and two and three and four and because that's tied and then one and two and three and four and measure three one and two and three and four and one that gets me through the introduction then we start the piece one and two and three and four and one and two and three and rest during the rest you come up one and two and three and four during the rest come up one and two and three and two and they're doing one five on each of these. And that's okay if you want to do that. I probably won't. I use different fingerings, but that's okay if that's the fingering you want to use. Because I typically use it I, rather than thumb. I, I stay out here and use two and then a one four. It's a little more advanced fingering, it's a little more difficult in your hands. If you have small hands, it doesn't work out real well. But the fingering in the book is fine if that's what you want to use. Let's go over to page 65. The first inning you're ending here, and during the rest you come up one key. Now you're in G major. One and two and three. It's the same melody and same rhythm. Now we're in the key of G major is all. At the bottom, your G chord is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and 
then during the rest you come up and play this mess. It's a, a B, a D, an E, and a G. So you just spell out the chord. You figure it out one note at a time, start at the bottom and go up. And you get this. Lovely, huh? Left hand. One and two and. Not hard there. Go down to measure four. It's one and. Reach up through the octave. And then second here. And then you, again, it's one and five. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and one. Okay. Go up to measure 13. Top of page 65. One and two and three and. Now you can go ahead and use five and one if you want. You just go here and here. If you have large hands, you can get away with doing a two four on the black keys and then a one five again. You're doing. But the fingering in the book is fine. It's kind of fun too. Put the hands together. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and uh, jump down to measure five where the piece starts. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and there's a rest in the right hand there you gotta move. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and Repeat back up to the reverse repeat. Uh, however, for now, let's go on. Measure 13 at the top. One and two and three and one and two and three. One and two. Same rhythm as before. We're just in the key of G major. Then we can add the articulation, the staccatos and the accents. Nice light wrist staccato here. Short. One and two. And then an accent. One and two. Three and four and one. And two and four and one and two and three. Now, you see, on this is measure five in the left hand on the first beat above that bottom staff, it's in the between the staffs, there's a little up arrow that's a marcato. That is a stronger accent. The regular accent is just a little extra oomph, marcato, you get a little more oomph. And you can play a little bit short. Not real short, just a little bit. So forth. So just a little bit. I don't know, really know why the marcato is there. In my opinion, you just you just give it a staccato, like you've been doing it. They want a little extra. Maybe it's because it's the beginning of the piece, I'm not sure. Because they do the same thing at the top of page 65 in measure 14. When you go to the new key, they give the first one up. It's like it starts now. A little extra. You go through and add on all the staccatos and accents and all that stuff. And we can talk about dynamics. Well, it's loud at the beginning. It's going to be both hands. It makes the accented notes very loud. bit that's moderately loud and that's the right hand. Actually it's the top note. Everything else needs to be under it. So on this you come down a little bit. Now if you can a measure ten these half notes Try and bring up. We want the, that's the melody. That's what we want to hear. If you can play the other stuff a little under it. You can bring that out. And then repeat. Go up to 13, measure 13. You, now you're going to crescendo up just a little bit to loud because you're moderately loud as you are. Measure 19 and 20. Try to bring out the top note if you can. Now 
you're going to be soft. Now whether you decrescendo to soft or stay low, in my opinion you should decrescendo. There's no reason to play this loud on, on, on measure 21. That, there's no reason to play those loud anymore because you're leading into something else. So I suggest you come down. That makes the accented note sort of loud. Or you're soft and then moderately soft. It makes the accented note moderately soft because you're soft and you, the accent just comes up a little bit. In a measure 23, you have a crescendo, you're going to crescendo up to loud, don't get loud to the last measure, so take your time. So measure 23, I'm soft, moderately soft, moderately loud, loud. You see, I saved most of the crescendo toward the end of that. So just crescendo a little bit and then give it. The fermata note, you just hang on to that for a while, you play it loud, so you hang on. With a metronome, I just double it and hold it for four counts instead of two. Speed-wise, well, it's 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 a happy song, and it it's with a swing. So again, we're going to swing the eighth notes. We're going to swing the counting: one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. And as far as how fast it goes, it's a happy song. So how much wine have you had? I said, it, it kind of depends on if you keep singing it over and over, the tendency is to speed it up. But be careful, you don't want to do that too much. So it's So you get to the song. That's basically what it is. You can't really feel the swing too much because there's not a lot of eighth notes going on, but still feel it. One and two and three and four and then they've added pedal. Okay, so why are we pedaling it? Well, and more than anything else, it's to add overtones. But it also helps us to connect some of these chords that we can't connect otherwise. I'm going to use lag pedal or overlapping pedal, so the notes go down first and then the pedal. So on, on the syncopated notes in the first measure, Play them first and then the pedal. And I'm going to lift it as I play the next staccato note. I'm going to connect them. So again, it's. And then a measure three, I connect these. Because I can't connect them otherwise. It also adds overtones to them. It's nice. So I like this. This hit. Add over, it adds overtones when you do that. And it helps to give us some color. And that's okay. And then when you get to the piece on page of uh, the actual song on measure five, no no pedal here. And, but when you get to measure ten, now we use pedal to connect these together. And I, the note goes down first, and then I change the pedal, so it's. And I lift it up on, in the last measure there. When I do the staccato, I want to hear it. Here's a short note. So forth. On page 65, it's the same thing. We pedal on measure 19 and 20 to connect the notes and helps to give them color too. But I don't pedal that staccato note I lift up. time I have the staccato note, I'm going to lift the pedal or I don't get a staccato note. And then of course the last note, chord, you pedal that to give it color. Because I've, I've done it before, I've given others color on the notes. If I didn't use pedal throughout this piece at all, I would not pedal the last note either. But because I'm using pedal and I'm giving these other colors, it, then it fits. I can give this color too. Overtones. So it's just a fun piece. Just Get into it and feel it, and that's.
another thing at the bottom of page 65 to put in Roman numerals on the octaves on the chords for the left hand I measures 10 through 12 that's uh, at the bottom of page 64 the half notes here so what are the numbers of the chord well, they give you the chord name so if you know the chord name you can figure out the number we're in the key of F so an F chord is a one chord right and a B flat in the key of F is a one, two, three, four, so that'd be a four chord. And then an F chord is a one chord. And a C7 chord in the key of F, one, two, three, four, five, that would be a five, seven chord. I guess gave you all the answers there. Huh? You can do the same thing on measures 19 and 20, but it's the same chord sequence, so the Roman numerals will be the same. And that's what they want you to do. I don't know if I was supposed to tell you that or not, but I did, so okay. Let's play this together slowly. I'm not going to do the dynamics, but we will do the repeat and all that. So give us four counts and let's just try it together. One, two, ready and go. And one, and two, and three, and four. And one, and two, and three, and four. And one, and two, and three, and four. And one, and two. Two and three and four and one and two and three. 